Um, we're really excited to go to Alabama. Um, they've got a, a, a great team, uh, very physical, big. Uh, Milrose playing really good. Their defense is playing exceptional. Um, got a huge offensive line. Burton is a is a real deal out at wide receiver, the kind of running back wise with Mc, McClellan uh, and Williams. Uh, both of them are really, really good runners. Um, Bond's an exceptional wide receiver. So uh, they've got, you know, they're Alabama and uh, playing really well right now. Big physical football team. Um, but we're excited to go over there and, and, and play uh, play the game. Um, so you said you would say um, after you watched the tape how you thought the O line going back to how you had it, how that worked. What did you see? And then as you addressed the the run game and the offense going forward, what what has to happen for you? Well, um, there was so much movement. Um, that we couldn't stay in front of them. Uh, we couldn't get uh, basically the pry backs and some things like that could open some holes up. Uh, we just weren't quick enough to stay in front of them. Um, we practiced and knew what they were going to do in their mint front. Uh, to their own player, and it just seemed like uh, we were overreaching uh, that situation. It was almost like we weren't quite um, uh, seeing the game like uh, we had practiced it. Um, maybe maybe their movement was faster uh, than what uh, the scout team was uh, able to do. Um, but I, I think uh, – you know, because of the age of some of the guys, I don't know that we can uh, make the moves and stay with the moves that that we made. There, there may be one or two, but, uh, you know, I think uh, with Bo being a veteran there uh, at center, I think we've got to start back there and then uh, work from there. Uh, some of our problems – uh, in the RPO, when we hand the ball off and we're not blocking a linebacker, um, and we hand the ball off and he makes a play, uh, sometimes it looks like, uh, you know, an unblocked guy, which he is, but it's designed to throw the football if if he's uh, out of a area. And uh, sometimes we handed the ball off and that there was there was a couple two or three times there that the guy made the play and and we weren't accounting for him we were reading him so got a lot of work to do uh, in that area I do think uh, Ole Miss has a really good defense um, they proved that when they played Alabama as well I had a chance to watch that again um, so uh, we've got to get better our penalties um, you know we're continue to work on that it's uh we've just got to keep the noise going all the time i believe that might help um you know there's a, the rule on that a little bit is you know we've got uh, linebackers flinching jumping yelling move several different times i don't know if that's what the rule is intended for uh, but We've got to practice it like that is the rule and, and uh, stay in there better. Coach, I was wondering, with, with Brady Latham specifically, what are you seeing from him on film that's maybe causing him to struggle a little bit this year? Well, I mean, he just – I mean, <laughs> he's jumping. I mean, I don't know how else to say it. Uh, he's flinching whenever they say move. Uh, not all the time, but but a lot. You know, he's had a, several, and and uh, I don't know really how to answer that one. 
I, we kind of talked about it after the game on Saturday with, you know, so many close losses. Is there, aside from penalties, is there maybe, you know, one other, a few other common denominators in those that you could, you know, maybe turn those from losses to wins? Well, I think, I think, yeah, I think offensively running the ball successfully, whatever that may be. Um, you know, I think this team here, Alabama, rushed for a low hundreds on uh, Ole Miss as well. Uh, not as well, we didn't. But what I'm saying is the consistency of first down, uh, you know, we're, we're just putting ourselves in a hole all the time. We're not winning first downs. And, you know, a gain of three would get us to second seven. We've been playing a lot of second 10, second 12, second 13. So I think that would help us uh, with more drives, you know, sustain us in drives. Obviously, pretty consistent. We haven't been very good in scoring touchdowns in the red zone. When we get down there, uh, you know, we got a big turnover Saturday. I think it was on the 38 and, uh, you know, kicked a field goal out of it. You know, that would have been a huge momentum for us if we would have went down and scored. Um, uh, we have to move the pocket. We have to move the pocket. Because we can't protect it, we can't we can't sit back there and protect protect him, uh, uh, and that's okay. We know that, so we we've got to move the pocket, and uh, defensively, we just got to get off the field uh, on third down a little more often. I thought our secondary had their by far their best game uh, this year, uh, but. You know, we had a third and 15, we jump off sides, a third and 10, and, and they make the first down. So uh, we just got to be more consistent. We got to, you know, uh, help each other. In other words, we, you know, we go down and score, we take the lead, it's time to get off the field, you know, and give us the ball back and things of that nature. We just got to play better team football and be more consistent. We're close. Uh, I know uh, for the outside world, it doesn't look like we've got a very good football team. I think we do. Uh, we just got to find a way, like you're, what you're just asking me, and how to how to win at the end. You know. Um, I know you have to take every game one by one, but when the fans saw the schedule that you had and this four game stretch you're in, and this is game number four of it, uh, it just looks so daunting. And I wonder, uh, are your players able to separate that, like, and and get ready for each game and. You know what I mean? Like wipe the slate clean and get and get focused on the next game. Well, I think you've seen that the answer is yes in that. You know what I mean? It's just a new I, I understand the question because it's a it's a whole new feeling since I've been here. In other words, you know, we've always started at least three and oh, you know, and had the life of uh, you know, we've always well, every year well, not the first year, but you know, the last two years we were in the top twenty five and things of that nature and so it's just different. I think the BYU game it really lingers over, uh, you know, uh, and and they're four and one. They've got a good football team. I don't take anything away from them, but I think that game really is the one because if you look at it and you go play your heart out at LSU, you play a pretty good game at A and M, and then uh, the other night we're leading in the fourth fourth quarter, but we're losing, you know, and so. Uh, it's just different. You, know, you take the BYU game as well, and it, it happens, so you have to take it. Um, it's just a different feeling. So I think I, I'm not concerned about do we have talent and things of that nature to win. It's it's where are we in our head. Well, each Saturday you go out there and, and you know, we're playing hard. Uh, we're getting better. Um, uh, we just are still, you know, two weeks ago we made no, you know, no penalties. And then we come back. So we just got to be consistent. But to answer your question, you know, uh, when you lose your will to fight, you're just a survivor, you know. And and uh, how long can you just hang on to the rope instead of fighting? And uh, I think we've got a group of fighters, and I think I think we'll be fine. Obviously, uh, we've got Alabama on the road, and then you know. Uh, you know we have some some home games, and uh, uh, but uh, we certainly need to go play well against Alabama and see if we see if we can't steal a win on the road. Hey, Coach, you can tell they're still fighting for you. Um, but I, my question was on the offensive line. I mean, you've seen everything in your experience as an offensive line coach. Just curious, in the preseason, did you see 
potential issues that you're having on the offensive line that, you, that you're having right now? You, you know, what happens when you go into situational football um, and where there's some things that might flare up uh, in third down, you know, protection. Uh, absolutely. Um, the other thing is, and, and when you talk about one, it doesn't mean you're talking negative about another, okay? But, you know, we had Devin Manuel. I think there was at times uh, during uh, fall camp that I thought he was, you know, two, three best linemen we had. And then he basically has not played this year, you know, uh, which not only takes away from there, but then it takes away from some other things that possibly you might can do in movement when he when you don't have him. Uh, Tykees Crawford was another guy that has been hurt, this, that, and other. Now, that's not an excuse. You asked a question, and I'm, have, has it flared up? Yes, it did, but not quite as much, you know, because we were a little healthier at that point, had a few more – things we could do, um, how to fix that, you know, you might get out of, of uh, man schemes. In other words, uh, it's like if you're having slide protection and you know you have backup. So I don't have this guy particularly just one-on-one. -on -one. Now, tackles are different because if they stay outside, you're not, you know, you can chip out and things of that nature. But if they blitz, you can't, you know, because you're taking your chip out of it. But if I'm in a slide, I know I got backup. I got backup. It's the same way when you run a true gap scheme. I'm, everybody's going this way. Someone's pulling. Guy moves. I got backup. I got backup. I got backup. When you play, when you're in a man scheme, which it could be on the backside, you're reading the linebacker or something like that. Now, I'm one-on-one -on -one over here, okay, but over here, if anybody crosses face, I have no backup. So I think I think some of the plays that we're running, uh, we got to back each other up. We're just not we're not there right now where we can go. Okay, you can whip him, you can whip him, you can whip him. It's got to be if he moves, someone's going to help me with this. And uh, I think that's a little bit more of where we're headed uh, in. Uh, so we can have some type of success running the football. Uh, it's the same way in, in pass protection. There's things that's called as true gap schemes where you're just – everybody's sliding. Now, they can beat you too off the edge if you, if you don't watch it. Um, but some of those things um, we have to do to cover up uh, for movement. Uh, we're not handling it. It's not so much that we're getting just drilled one-on-one. It's we've we've got to have ability. Excuse me. If they're not moving, we've got to have ability to to back each other up in our run game uh, uh, because we're getting so much movement. And movement's been the glaring thing for us. Do you think that Jordan is getting in his head a little bit with getting hit so many times and stuff? Do you think maybe he's also? I'm sure. I know he holds himself to a high standard. In this offense, still thinking about what to do so. and trying to be perfect and all that stuff, and ultimately having those issues that he's. I been think having. so. I think he's pressing too, Trey. I mean, you you know, I, I think everybody could understand if he was. You know, I think he's pressing. It's his senior year. All you know, a lot of things on his mind. Um, he would be better at answering than me, but that's what I believe that that he's probably pressing and. He also has way more on his plate, much more on his plate now than he ever has. Um, and uh, so um, it's been, I'm sure, difficult for him. Um, but I, th I do believe that he could really thrive and shine uh, if we just protected him a little bit better. Uh, if you notice in the games that if he does have protection, we're – we're able to throw uh, and catch uh, well. And uh, when he doesn't, uh, not so much, you know. And I think that's with everybody. But I think he wants to be Superman, and I think he's probably pressing a little bit too much, too much right now to make a play. Coach, what's the 
games and Coach Saban started Mill Road, then he benched him a game, brings him back. Is, have you seen them adjust their offense some to fit Mill Road? I mean, from yeah. the – because Kiffin kind of – they brought in, you know, the hurry, the spread and stuff. But if you see him adjust their offense some to fit Milrow. Milrow's great at throwing the deep ball. I mean, he is. And uh, really, if you look a little bit about he and K.J. from a – let's say from a year ago, I think the thing with K.J., you'd say he can run and he can throw the deep ball, you know. And I'm not saying Milrow can't make every throw. I'm saying he's fantastic at the deep ball. And they put some quarterback sweeps in. Yeah, they were quite a bit. You know, when you go back and look at South Florida game, you know, when Milrow didn't start versus uh, now, uh, yes, uh, they're a run first team, uh, including using him, and uh, and they're they're throwing the long ball and and connecting. Burton's Burton's a great one on one guy to throw it to. At one point, didn't the SEC try to have a deal? where they would give both teams a bye the same week? Because Mississippi State's got a bye this week. You're going to play them playing eight straight weeks. I mean, was there ever – wasn't there an effort at one point to give both teams a bye, Coach? Or uh, well, I think I think there is on, like, those uh, rivalry games. In other words, I think Georgia and Florida, if I'm correct, when I was at Georgia, I think both of us had a bye, you know, uh, getting ready for that. But I, I don't – I think there are games like that where they're trying to, you know, uh, give both teams. I don't know if scheduling has changed that or what. I, I, I don't know. I know that my first year here, I believe uh, uh, we had a – we did not have a bye, and we were playing Tennessee, and they're coming off a bye, and then we had the voter – the vote deal. Remember that, Kyle, where – we couldn't practice on Monday, so we we didn't have a bye. They did, and we couldn't practice. I think we went to Sunday that week. I know we did, but uh, yeah, I think used to. And, and I, I don't know if OU Texas does that now or what, but but uh, I think those big long-standing rivalry games. I think they do try to do that. Coach, just kind of um, piggybacking off what Trey asked, KJ and Rocket have. You know, not really lived up to the maybe expectations they've set for themselves this season. Just how difficult is that for you, for the coaching staff, watching them struggle? And do you think it's having maybe any mental impact on the team watching their two leaders not have great experience? I don't. I don't know that it has anything on the team. I know it does on them. It has to. You know, um, when you're when you're not having success. I mean, it has to. But I think it goes back to. You're just gonna get through it, or you're gonna fight through it. You know, you're gonna survive and. You know, trying to survive, a lot of times you don't make it. You know what I mean? But you keep fighting and things of that nature, which I think our team's doing. I mean, I, well, I know they are. I don't have any question about that. But those two guys with high ex expectations coming into the year and all that stuff, the thing they just got to keep remembering is you got six, hopefully seven games left. And, and um, you know, a lot of work to be done. Um, I know each and every week, though, they're, you know, we're trying to get – Rock is different because, you know, he's coming off injury and that kind of stuff. KJ, uh, I could see that wear it on him a little bit more. Even though he's had some success, uh, Rock it would be different to me because he's probably not fully healthy quite yet, but he's close. And But both of them going to have to they're, – they're mature guys. They'll both fight through it, and we'll help him. You guys haven't practiced yet, but I was wondering if you had any updates on the injuries that you mentioned and, and Nudie, too, who didn't play on Saturday. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I think um, – well, we had three guys. Well, we had a bunch. But there, there's, a, there's a possibility of about five not being able to play and then a possibility of maybe two of those five being able to play, you know. But um, – we got to see through practice, you know, if they can get through, you know, get through workout or get through uh, a non-contact practice, things of that nature. And then those type of injuries are daily evals to see whether they're able to play or not. It makes it hard too because, you know, you're on one one side you're you're trying to prepare without them, and then on the other one you're trying to prepare with them and. Uh, so the sooner we can find that out, the better off it would be. But we, we're, we've got a plan. But uh, 
we've got about five that are question marks, big, big question marks. Um, for Tesla, who started the season so well, uh, two catches in the last two weeks, is it kind of the similar situation with him as to KJ and Rocket, where he's got a lot going on and he's coming in, even though he's older, he's a new guy on the team? I, I could say pr- probably. Um, uh, he's getting targets. You know, he's getting some targets. Uh, uh, but – uh, it could it could certainly be the same way we we've we've sat down and visited with him and things of that nature uh, but uh, we've got we got to try to get the ball to him uh, more you know a lot of things go into that you know you have to protect a guy you have to get open you have to you have to uh, win some one on one catches and all those things which I think he's as good as anybody we have doing that but we we would like to get him involved in the offense more, uh, certainly. Specifically on Kudos taking over at center, j- Kudos taking over at center. Just what do you think overall of his performance? Uh, I think I think uh, he tried his ever loving heart out. He played the best he could, um, but uh, we probably need to move him move him back out to tackle. Um, He's young. Uh, probably there's a lot of things going on in there. We felt like that was the way to go, and uh, uh, probably uh, not the way to go. When you got a great field goal kicker, and obviously you made the 56 yarder. I think there was a time in the first half, maybe when he could have tried a, a similar kick, but was that against the wind? I mean, did, it was did other that, direction, yeah. and we had we had specific marks going in. Uh, to our pregame talk about where they could make it, and it was just slightly outside of his distance. And when uh, Arkansas had Kendall Trainer, they I remember the coach talking about thinking about uh, playing to a field goal. I mean, does that go into your thinking now when you reach a certain part of the field? Well, you know, simply because we're having so many uh, negative plays, you know, I've always on the phones, I always say, hey, we're, we're in field goal range, or even, you know, Hey Dan, you've got two plays here. Um, in case we get in field goal range, you know, it depends on what the down and distance would be on fourth down. Uh, but we certainly have a good one, and uh, you know, we were going for it on the fourth down. We we didn't get the playoff in time, and then uh, had to call it or weren't going to had to call a timeout, and then Cam. He basically jogged out there and he came back. He said, Coach, if you want to kick it, I can make it. And we were down 10. I said, okay. Coach, you've got the defense kind of just talking about the field goal and stuff like that. Did it just fire you up? Or yeah, you wasn't that something? I, I, You know, you, you look at and, – and I'll get back to it, but you look at Tyrus Washington, you know, some of the things he did was really incredible for his first really real, real game time. Uh, our secondary uh, was played as good as they possibly could. I mean, not as good as they possibly can, but they played their best ball. Uh, Where to get that stop down there and give us an opportunity was huge. Um, You know, those guys are flying around. Uh, You know, obviously, every time you come in, you can say, well, we got to get better at tackling because you're going to miss a tackle in the game that you are. Uh, But I thought that was big. They've done that several times now this year. And, and, uh, the future, I think, on our defensive side over there, the way that they're flying around doing some things, I think it's bright. I think we've come a long way. Coach, you mentioned Manuel's been banged up most of the season. Is he still dealing with that stinger? And yeah. do you think he'll maybe be ready for this week, or is he still kind of day to day? Man, I don't know. Um, but I know this that he's got to practice. He's got to practice full speed. You know, he has to, or he's. Uh, you know, and and listen, I don't have a problem with how Chamberlain's playing either. He's a freshman. He's he's, he, you know, I don't I don't. Uh, he's doing a really nice job. Uh, but Dev, if he doesn't practice full speed, I mean, he hadn't played any ball, you know. So it's not like uh, Brady Latham hadn't been out, you know, for a while, and you get him Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday practice and he can go out there and play you know he has never done it much so man I hope so Uh, 
we need him to. And again, that's not to bench Chambly. That's we just we need another offensive line. We need Tyke Crawford who didn't didn't travel. I mean, we we need some extra bodies in there so we can maybe look at some different situations in their position, but keep guys fresh and things of that nature. And uh, we just haven't been able to do that. You talked about the secondary and how well they played last week. You were asked about limiting explosive plays for Ole Miss. I think Judkins had one 20 plus run, but no passes over 20 plus yards. Now with Milrose ability to stretch the field, <laughs> what type of confidence do you have in your secondary again, faced with a really tough test? Well, I do, you know, now, Two of them, we don't know if we're going to be able to play or not, you know. But uh, I do. I think they're really communicating well. Uh, you're not seeing the wide open, you know, what happened here, uh, getting behind us. Uh, I think they really like each other. I think they, they, they're they a close-knit uh, group back there. But, uh, yeah, Milro, I mean, he's going to throw it now. I mean, he's going to throw it up, and he can throw it a country mile, you know. And, and so you're gonna have to you're gonna have to stay with the guy for a long time. You know we need to get pressure on him. That's what we need to do. And of course that's a slippery slope too, because if he gets out of the pocket, you know he can fly. But you got to pick your poison at at some point. And uh, uh, so uh, yeah, I, I think you're exact. You're 100 percent correct. Uh, they got speed on the outside, and they're gonna throw it up. And we just have to win that one on one matchup. Next question, but it's it's rare to see Alabama so low in the SEC in terms of sacks allowed. Obviously, you know you like the idea. Maybe you can get pressure on Milro, but how important is it on the edge to keep contain on a guy like that? Yeah, big time. You know, as we found out out, out here last year. You know, I think it's 28, 23. We got third and thirteen. We got the crowd behind us, and he takes off for eighty on us. You know, and we didn't have anybody could catch him. Um, Really, it wasn't anybody real close to him. And uh, uh, so that's going to be a, a big deal, you know. And he's, he's, he's the guy who makes them go, you know. So, obviously, that would be our number one concern. We're going to try to do everything we can to, uh, you know, make him uncomfortable. Usually when Arkansas plays Alabama, they're number one or two. They're a little lower in the rankings. Oh, they're all the way down to 10 or 11. Yeah, I know. <laughs> But uh, seriously, what, you know, they had an uncharacteristic home loss. I know it's to Texas, and they're playing real yeah, well. It was but Texas. Yeah, what? Yeah, I guess just what, what, what's your take on Alabama? Maybe people thinking, well, they're they're still good, obviously, <laughs> but they're not the usual Alabama. Oh, they can go up there, line up, and play anybody. I mean, they can. They've got the talent. They, you know, uh, you know, we're catching them now where they're. I think they're really getting into their groove. Their defense is fantastic. Uh, and offensively now they're they're doing what they can do to score points and have success and and uh, uh, you know if you had Bryce Young forever you know what I mean he, he you know, all the quarterbacks they've had and now I think Milrow's going to get known for uh, having great success for Alabama it just might be a little bit different than what the past quarterbacks have been but. They're really good. I, they're leading the SEC West, and and uh, so that hadn't changed, you know. So he's in his seventies now, but he's breaking in new coordinators, which he does a lot because the guys are always getting other jobs. Yeah. But uh, what do you think about him doing what he's doing at his age? And I know Lane Kevin kind of needled him, apparently saying, "Well, this might be the last time we play him," but he hadn't indicated retirement plans. Or what, what do you think about a guy at his age doing doing what he's doing for as long as he's done it? Unbelievable. I mean, it is. I mean, to go through all the all all the years that he's done, he's had great success. But you can't say that he hadn't been stressed. You know, I mean, uh, for him to do that and so successful, I mean, he's the best best coach ever been. You know, and and uh, uh, hit. But I imagine he'll he'll quit when he's not having fun anymore or not not change the lives in these kids and and uh until that time you know you're gonna get one hell of a football team well coached and talented and plays physical you touched on this a little bit after the game but with ty washington um i'm just curious like what what did he because it looked like he's probably about fourth on depth chart 
yeah. before last game. What did he do to emerge to the front of the depth chart and then having so much success in the game? Well, um, he he. I think it took him a little bit of time to learn the offense, learn learn what to do, um, which obviously again makes you play a little slower and things of that nature. I just thought he came out when we said, hey, this is what it is. I think he saw opportunity. I think he believed us when we said, hey, whoever has the best week, that's what we're going to do. And, uh, man, he just had a great week of practice. He just did. And, and uh, like I say, I think it was after Tuesday's practice, I told Morgan, I said, okay, that, I mean, we're going to do what we say we're going to do. That's the guy. And no matter where he was on the depth chart, and uh, and then to see him uh, have have that success, I'm just really really happy for him. That had to be a great feeling for him. And and uh, but that's what happened. You know, I think he I think he just got comfortable, more comfortable learning the learning the offense. Did you have a plan to target him five times on the opening drive, or did you just work out that <laughs> no. way? No, <laughs> no, it was not. It just worked out that way. And, Man, he made some nice plays. I mean, obviously the touchdown was planned, you know, but or hoping that it went that way. But the rest of them, uh, you know, just kind of happened. This is obviously Alabama hadn't lost to a team with a losing record since 07 uh, under Saban. Um, nobody's going to give you guys a chance to win right. this game. Probably three touchdown underdogs. Yeah. What do you say? What's the message to the team about going in after the stretch you guys have had to go in and – do what would basically be a shock the world type of win. Well, I think it's just no different than uh, a little bit. Uh, um, we've got to get better. We, we, you know, we we have six games left. We played half our season, and we can't win two games and go to a bowl game. You know, so we we've got to continue to get better. Um, I think would be the first one. Let it all f hang out. I mean. Uh, you can't beat them if you don't. And uh, uh, so let's go over there and let's have some fun. Let's put a great game plan together and keep fighting. And uh, and we've got to we've got in order for us to win, whether it be Saturday or forward, we got to we got to concentrate on what we can do better. And we've got to run the ball better. We have got to cut down on the the pre-snap penalty. It's not post-snap, it's pre-snap penalties. You know, you're going to get three or four. Ole Miss had five, you know, but that was real penalties, you know. Uh, the ones that, that you know, up up to the officials. Uh, but if we do that, uh, I think we can play with anybody. Uh, but we haven't done it consistently yet. But our message would be, you know, let's go out there and, let it fly. You know, last time we went down there, it was a seven-point game, you know. And I don't know if you'd asked me before that game, would we score, I don't know what we score, 34 or something like that. Would we score 34 points? Probably, I'd say, mm, probably not, you know. So, 11 o'clock game, hopefully we'll get up ready to roll and got to take the logo off their helmet at some point and just know they're, they put their pants on just like we do. Let's go try to – Play a physical, smart game. See what happens. Five, I believe. Um, Forty-two, thirty-five. Was that what it was? Yeah. Uh, Nico, seven. Nico had an explosive TFL, and he he blew Bentley up on another play. I'm wondering, is he er earning more playing time? And are yes. there young guys like him and Ty that are giving you hope that we got a young crew coming? Yes. Up? Yeah. I mean, Nico had his best game and uh, had his most production and was flying all over the field and. Uh, Yes, he, he played more Saturday than what he had and, and certainly has earned that right to continue doing that. And and are there other younger guys like him oh, and Ty that um, – You know, Ian Grafford hasn't played a whole lot. He plays a little bit each game. But uh, he's a guy that I think is going to do something special. Obviously, Spence is playing some. Metcalf is playing some. Obviously, Braxton's starting for us. Uh, those guys off the top of my head that I think uh, wideouts really not right now want running back. Yeah, those would be the guys right now. And and uh, to be honest with you, 
I think Alex Sanford's going to be a really good player for us. I know he's playing special teams, but I think he's going to be a really good player for us. The year you went to Tuscaloosa and won with Northern Illinois is the last year Arkansas went to Tuscaloosa and won. What are the kind of things that has to happen to you, to go into that kind of venue and, and win a game? What do you have to do? Hey, you don't have to play perfect, but you have to play really good. And then you have to get off the, off the bus believing you're going to win. I think those are – I've said it for years, you, and now it's Georgia, but you've got Georgia, Alabama, both of them. There's some teams you walk off a bus and half your half your team going, who are we playing next week, you know. And I don't think we have that team. I think our team believes we can go and win. Um, uh, but I think that's the biggest battle is the thing on the helmet. And uh, – um, so you have to do that. You have to play. Uh, you can't – you got to keep hold of the ball. You, know, you can't throw picks. You can't lay it on the ground. And you've got to you got to have some help. They got they have to help you. you got to get turnovers and things of that nature and uh, to, to beat them at home like that. We'd have to play an extremely big-time game for us. But we're capable of it, and it's about time we do. Thanks, guys.